Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're talking about how to master music. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Why master music? The purpose behind mastering music is to prepare a recording for consumer grade equipment. This means that the master should adhere to the technical limitations of the equipment or the specifications of the medium. Typically when mastering, we want to retain the mix's timbre while increasing its perceived loudness. Any changes made to the signal during mastering should be minimal, improve the sound and enjoyability, and be made as objective as possible. Let's take a listen to a mix and its master. How to EQ a master When equalizing a master, try to avoid any changes greater than 3 dB. Also, I find that using subtractive equalization first is helpful. Furthermore, I typically avoid very narrow bands since this results in a more unnatural sound, whereas a 1 octave bandwidth or a Q value of 1.414 will sound more musical. Try low latency linear phase processing or natural phase processing if available since zero latency may cause some unwanted boosts or dips to your signal. Let's take a listen. How to compress a master. In many instances, you may need to compress a master since the mix will already be compressed enough. However, if you're trying to achieve a louder master or glue details together, use compression. My favorite method is to use an internal sidechain filter to ensure that the lows don't trigger compression. Then I'll time the compression to my host BPM using 60,000 divided by the BPM as my formula. This value or a half or quarter note of this number will be my release time. Let's take a listen. How to saturate a master. To saturate a master, you need to use both soft knee compression and harmonic distortion or use a saturation plugin which combines these effects. For a warmer sounding master, use a tube saturator. For a cleaner, slightly clearer sound, use a tape or a transistor saturation plugin. To see what harmonics you'd add to the signal with a particular saturator, run a sine wave through it and see what harmonics form with a frequency analyzer. Let's take a listen. How to excite a master. Exciters are frequency specific distortion plugins that target the high frequencies, in turn adding clarity to your instrument or master. The best way to add this is with a dedicated exciter plugin, which are somewhat rare, but some good options are the Logic Stock Exciter and Fresh Air by Slate. When mastering, keep this effect subtle. Since you're working with the full stereo track, excitement can become aggressive much sooner than you'd expect. Let's take a listen. How to create detail in a master. Of the many ways to add detail to a master, my favorites are low-level compression and parallel compression. In fact, you can combine these two for an interesting effect. First set up your aux send, then compress heavily. Next, introduce low-level compression to bring out the detail. 
then blend the compressed signal back in. This is an unorthodox method, but it accomplishes both downward and upward compression, resulting in a unique sound. Let's take a listen. How to Stereo Expand the Master You need to be careful when using stereo expansion on a master since some forms cause aggressive and unwanted phase cancellation. I personally prefer to use mid-side equalization or mid-side compression to achieve a wider stereo image, since I find these to sound the most natural. For a more vintage sound, use crosstalk on a tape machine plugin to widen your image. Let's take a listen. How to limit your master. Limiting your master can be difficult since you want the master to sound commercially loud, but while still preserving the original timbre, dynamics, and transients as much as possible. For a louder sound though, you may need to sacrifice some of these elements by using the limiter aggressively. A good starting point when limiting is using a 50 millisecond release time, achieving roughly three to six dB of attenuation and setting a ceiling of negative one dB true peak. Also, it's a good idea to use at least four times over sampling if it's available. Let's take a listen. How to measure your master. When measuring your master, a true peak meter measures the levels or peaks, and an LUFS meter measures the signal's perceived loudness. Ideally, your dB true peak will be around negative 1, and your LUFS will be somewhere between negative 16 LUFS for dynamic genres and negative 7 LUFS for loud genres. Loudness normalization is going to play a role as well and may turn your track up or down before streaming, so keep this in mind when you're determining your levels. Let's take a listen. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Also, join to stay up to date on all of our latest releases. Thank you so much for watching.